Hi, in this video I'm going to show you uh, FTP, which is File Transfer Protocol, and a free FTP program, which is FileZilla. And why would you need File Transfer Protocol? Uh, file Transfer Transfer Protocol moves your files from your local system to your remote uh, host server, where, where your files are at and your uh, website is located. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go up here in your search box or however you search, go through Google or whatever, and just type FileZilla and do a search. And the very first thing that's going to come up is FileZilla, the free FTP solution. So you click on that and you'll see two buttons here. One is download FileZilla client and the other is download FileZilla server. Now today we're going to deal with client. The server would be if you wanted to FTP from another computer on your network you would want to install a server or if you're on the internet as a machine and want to make a FTP server. So we're going to deal with FTP client right now. So you click that link right there for FTP client and it's going to give you uh, various places where you can download uh, this is going to be a zip file. So I'm assuming you have a way to uh, deal with zip files. If you don't, I will uh, make a video on that and that will be in another issue of another video that I'm doing. So anyway, you, you'll click that link and you'll wait. It says your download will start in however many seconds. And actually this one is not a zip file, so you don't have to worry about zipping or any of that. So you've chosen to open a file which is binary, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to click this save the file, but I've already installed, installed FileZilla, so I'm probably, yeah, this is going to ask me to save it. So I'm going to save it in this location right here, and it will save. And then when, you, uh, when your download is complete, you either go to the location on your hard drive or you if you're using uh, Firefox like I am you can just double click this right here and then uh, it's going to ask you if you want to run this and I'm not going to because I already have it installed and I have saved passwords and servers in there so uh, if you run this it'll then give you a dialog that uh, FileZilla wants to say, change your system uh, you will allow that so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this since I've already done that install. And now I'm going to go ahead and open the FileZilla program, which I actually already have it open, but I'll close it and I'll show you that you'll go under your start menu. Now I've got it right up here, but uh, if it doesn't show up up there, just go through here and look down until you see FileZilla FTP client double click that or well single click it and then it'll say FileZilla and it'll say uninstall. Click on FileZilla and that'll open a window that looks just like this. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to get the credentials from your uh, server machine. Uh, let's say you're on GoDaddy or you're on HostGator or one of the big servers or even one of the small servers it really doesn't matter. So up here in the upper left hand corner you'll see a little box like this and when you mouse over it it'll say open the site manager so if you want to save a site you open this box and save it in there if you don't want to save the site you just simply in enter the information across here it'll take you there but it won't save it so we're going to deal with saving a site so we're going to open the site manager right now now one of my servers is located on a machine called keys-homes.com. I'm not even sure if I've got anything going under that name. But uh, what you'll do is you'll put your domain name in here. No www or anything like that. Just your domain name, .com, .net, .cc, .whatever your domain name is there. First the name and then the dot .extension. Then you want to go down here and the login type will say anonymous, but you're going to select normal and then you put your username right here uh, the username that's provided by your web hosting service and then right under that you'll put your password and for obvious reasons I'm not gonna display my password and it's not going to display yours 
So the next thing is if you've got everything done correctly, oh and you'll also name it because it's going to come up with new sites. So what you're going to want to do is uh, when that opens up you'll name it or if it says new site you can always click rename and then rename it. But that's okay, we're not going to rename it. So we're going to we're going to say connect and if we successfully connect it's going to go ahead and save us and next thing you know you're in your server root file now with FileZilla on your right is your server on your left is your local machine so this is my local machine right here so to navigate up or down uh, you would just simply click the top box if you're not in the base directory and it will display up in the left hand side here what directory you're in. Now I'm in C downloads so I'm gonna go all the way back up to C so you'll see this is probably about how it'll start or it might start out in your account or whatever uh, for your user on that machine but I'm going all the way down to the base root of C and I've got a, fo a folder here called downloads and uh, I've also got my websites in their own folders so if I wanted to uh, let's say I'll do websites because that's where my websites are they're in a folder that I've called websites and uh, one of my folders under website is uh, cook this which is on that server so I'm gonna go to cook this and I can see all of my local files exist right here on the left these are the files that I have on my local machine. Now if I go to the right, with this particular host, you have to navigate to either www or public HTML. On some hosts, you don't have to do that. For example, GoDaddy will take you right into the HTML directory and you can't go up to this directory. So I'm going to click public HTML and that's going to take me into my file manager on the right side this is my server my remote server where I want the files to exist and this is my local server over here where I have my files that I've written that I'm ready to put up to my remote server so I already have all of my files in place and I don't really want to overwrite those so what I'm gonna do is uh, in this case we're imagining that I'm still in those files but I'm just gonna find a file that's not gonna affect anything so let me go back up to my C directory and do downloads so if I wanted to upload an entire folder all I would need to do to do that is to just click on the folder in my local machine I'm gonna open this folder so you can see what what all's in here but you can see there are a bunch of files in there. If I only want to upload one file, I'll find the exact same location here. If I want to upload this under, say, uh, this calendar directory, I don't even know what that is. If I wanted to upload it under the calendar directory, then I would just go into the calendar directory exactly where I want to upload it. But if I want to upload an entire directory to my server, which I want to do in this case. I'm going to upload Easy Populate for Zencart 1.5 because it doesn't exist on my upper server. So I would right click this and I'll see some options down here. I can add these files to the queue or I can upload them or I can enter the directory which I did by double clicking on that. So I'm just going to click upload and you'll see that down here on the very bottom it'll give you a status of what's going on how many successful transfers you've had, how many failed transfers, and how many are in queue to still be transferred. And in this case, uh, there's 44 files, so the queue is now empty, and there's no failed transfers. Now, to see this file over here, it's, it's over here now, but sometimes what you have to do is go up here and refresh the file and folder list so you can do a refresh like so now if you don't want that file over here or if you want to download that file back over to here uh, for example I'm gonna delete this on my end here so it no longer exists it's gonna ask me if I really want to delete it yes I really do so now I'm gonna do it in the reverse so I'm up on my server and let's say that you 
done everything on one machine but you want to transfer it over to another machine so that you can work on it on the go for example on a laptop or if you've done it on a laptop and you want to open it back up on your desktop you just go into this uh, FileZilla program and in order to download a file you do exactly the opposite you go to the file on your server and you just click download and it will then move it over to your basic machine so all you have to remember uh, especially in Windows is if you right click any directory or any single file you navigate to the location that you want it on your local machine and you navigate to the location that you want it on your server machine and then all you have to do is right click the file and uh, or the folder and then either upload in that case and if I right click over here it'll say download and this will give you a direction there will be a directional error arrow and remote it'll tell you the remote file and where you're at on the local file I hope that has helped you and FTP is not that difficult to figure out it's it's pretty easy a uh, nice feature about this is with your site manager if you work on multiple sites you can save all of these sites and each site that you save will have their own entry and then you can very quickly go to them. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go to one of my other servers and I'm going to show you how you can actually open multiple servers. Now it's going to give you, do you want to abort this previous connection and connect again or uh, do you want to establish a connection in a new tab? When you're very early to FTP, I would be careful with this and I would abort the previous connection and establish in a new tab. Or, yeah, abort, abort the connection and establish it where the current connection is. But if you're pretty advanced and you're not going to get lost, uh, I'm going to do this in a new tab and show you how that works. So essentially you have tabs up here. And this tab is one server and this tab is another server and you can have completely different files on this side to match up what you're doing on that side and different files on this side to match up what you're doing on that side so but the the problem with this is if you have two servers open you could inadvertently be in the wrong server because they tend to look pretty similar to one another uh, from the base root you could potentially be in the wrong server and send the wrong files up and overwrite something on the wrong server. So I don't recommend, unless you're pretty advanced at what you're doing, I don't recommend having multiple servers open, but it is an option, so uh, just wanted to point that out. Now the other thing is the Quick Connect. Uh, I use a uh, local FTP, uh, so I can do the 192.168.2.1 and port 2121 and this particular let me open up my uh, uh, device here this goes to my Android I've, I've uh, done a video on the Android uh, called well FTP and this way I can I can reach my Android device and I'm gonna go ahead and quick connect I'm gonna abort this previous connection and connect to that now in this case, since it's on a local machine, I don't need to use passwords or anything. I can just go in anonymously. And this allows me to get into my Android device. And uh, for example, I can go into my camera and I can download all of my images and video right into my editing software if I want to do that. So I hope this has been helpful. If it has, please give me a thumbs up, rate, subscribe. And uh, if you need any additional help with FTP, please leave your comments in the section down below. And I will look at that. And if it's something I can fix up, uh, look in the description for links to other FTP-related items. And also, I will do a, a link on my favorite unzipping program. So if you need a zip program, look down there for that. Once again, thank you. Rate, subscribe. Thumbs up are always great. And have a good day.